In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert from the RAD combo box to the new and improved RAD drop-down list control introduced in the Q2 2010 release of RAD controls for WinForms. So, as you can see, I currently have opened a WinForms application that I've been working on. Uh, the top section of this application actually features a RAD combo box that's in unbound mode, meaning that I've added items directly to the items collection on the control. And if I click this uh, combo box and select an item, as you can see, the label below this gets updated to tell me which item I've selected. In the bottom area of this application, there is also another RAD combo box, but this time it's actually in data bound mode, meaning I have bound a list of items to the data source property on the control. And again, it does a similar thing to the one at the top. When I select an item, it updates the label below to tell me which item I've selected. So let's go ahead and update this application to use the new RAD dropdown list. So I'm going to switch back over to Visual Studio for this app. And let's go ahead and drag out the new RAD dropdown list control. I'm going to start by converting this unbound control at the top. So to get started, this control actually contained five items in its items collection. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply add items to the items collection of the new dropdown list. So I'm going to go over here to the properties window to its items property, and I'll expand the collection editor. I'm just going to click it five times to add our five items and then click OK. And then if we take a look at the RAD combo box, the way it's determining which item we've selected is it's actually using an event, which we can see over here in the properties window. It's using the selected index changed event. Well, the RAD dropdown list also features a similar event. So if I come back over here to the RAD dropdown list, as you can see, it also contains the selected index changed event. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this and create the event and jump into the code behind. So as you can see, before we start implementing this new event, here's the old event that was being used by the RAD combo box. It is a, again the selected index changed event and what it's doing is it's actually just setting the text property on our label to the selected text uh, for the current item in the RAD combo box. So let's go ahead and update our new event to do the same thing. So I'm going to say label selected item unbound, the text property, and then I'm going to set it to rad dropdown list dot selected text. And since we have our new event implemented now, I'm going to go ahead and erase the old rad combo box selected index changed event. And let's go ahead and come back over here into the designer and erase the old control as well. So I'll go ahead and move over the new RAD dropdown list. And now let's take a look at this in action. So as you can see, here's the new RAD dropdown list control. It contains our five items. And when I click on an item, it calls that event in the code behind and updates our label to tell us which item we've selected. So let's go ahead and update the uh, data bound RAD combo box to be a data bound RAD dropdown list. So I'm going to switch back over to Visual Studio again. And let's go ahead and drag out another RAD dropdown list. And since the uh, RAD combo box is in data bound mode, it's actually going to be quite a bit easier to convert this control because we're not actually going to do anything in the code behind. If we look at the data source property for this RAD combo box, we can see that it's bound to my item binding source, which is actually a binding source that's right here in our component bin. And this is what takes care of our data source binding. So if I want to bind a new control to this data source, I simply need to set the data source property to my item binding source. And you know everything is taken care of after that. I don't have to do any extra steps in the code behind. So I'm going to go ahead and select our new RAD dropdown list. And let's update its data source property to be my item binding source. So I'm going to click the dropdown and select my item binding source. And we also need to make sure that we update the display member, which is the property that the users will see when they click on the dropdown list. So I'm going to update this to the name value that's pulled from our data source item. And then we also need to update the value, the value member. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this down, and that's going to be the value property that's pulled from the items in our data source. And again, since we're using a binding source, if we take a look at the label that we're using for this uh, data bound mode uh, dropdown list, we can take a look at its data bindings property and see that the text that's being displayed in it is actually being pulled from my item binding source as well. 
So we don't need to add any extra code to determine uh, when we've selected an item because the binding source is going to update that, that label for us. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the old rad combo box and drag over the new rad dropdown list. Go ahead and expand it a little bit. And let's take a look at the application in action now. So as you can see, our data bound rad dropdown list now contains all of the items from our data source. And when I click on one of these items, it updates the corresponding label below. So that's pretty much all it takes to update the rad combo box to the new and improved rad dropdown list included with the Q2 2010 release of rad controls for WinForms. Thanks for watching.